is Luke with SNS Diesel Motorsport. If you're the proud owner of a modern uh, diesel vehicle, um, you need to know about what we're getting ready to talk about. So if you have a modern common rail electronic controlled car, it could be a BMW 335D, X5, Volkswagen, Jetta, diesel, uh, or any of the flavor of diesel pickups, Duramax, Cummins, Power Stroke, they're awesome vehicles, good fuel economy, good power, uh, refined. But all of that's possible because of a very precise um, fuel system. And so that fuel system is running at pressures that were previously unimaginable, um, but the tolerances, the manufacturing, the precision that's in these fuel systems is what makes that thing work the way that it is so that we can have the kind of vehicles that we expect to have nowadays. So what we wanna talk about is taking care of that system, fuel cleanliness, what we see here on the daily uh, we test thousands and thousands of injectors and fuel pumps, and uh, we're trying to prevent you guys having problems so that you don't have to send your fuel system to us as often to repair. Um, do yourselves a favor and try to take good care of the product. So fuel system cleanliness gets talked about a lot. Not super exciting topic, but it's a super important topic. <clears throat> what can happen if you have uh, fuel contamination is one, so getting deaf in your fuel, we actually just had a customer bring a pump in that they filled the truck full of deaf, or the ambulance actually in this case. Um, that obviously problematic um, and you know, is what it is, well, that's, that's what happens. Um, we also see gas contamination. That's one thing I tell the guys in the fuel lab always, we get a set of injectors in that we think might be damaged, you actually just do the old fashioned smell test, sniff test them and uh, a lot of times if they smell like gas, we know they're gonna have problems. So. Uh, proper filtration is very important, like just getting gas or death in it, there's not much you can do about that other than try to get them out as soon as possible and get them to us or to somebody to try to uh, salvage, uh, flush, test, no guarantees, but that's your best bet. Other than that, being super clean and careful when the system's apart. Uh, a lot of guys are working on things. You might have to have fuel lines off when you're working on something completely unrelated. Uh, you might have fuel lines off or the system apart when you're installing new injectors. You might be installing a CP3 conversion kit on an LML or a DCR conversion kit for a Ford. The best thing you can do is be sure that when you have everything apart, you're using caps, uh, plastic caps like we supply on our injectors. Um, and uh, for the rail and the fuel lines, make sure you clean everything out very well uh, and keep everything sealed up. <clears throat> because what we see, unfortunately, uh, so this is a 5.9 Cummins injector. When it comes from us, it's got caps on the nozzle. It's got caps covering the solenoid. That's just to protect it from damage. And then it's got a cap sleeve over the center here. So on these, the main supply feed is actually through this high pressure connector tube or feed tube. Uh, and that supplies fuel into the side of the injector. So you wanna cover that and protect that as well from getting any debris down in there when you've got anything apart. Um, the reason that is, this stuff is all impressive feats of engineering. Uh, not that I'm biased, but uh, Bosch did a pretty amazing job on a lot of these fuel systems designing these things and manufacturing these things. So. What can happen often is if you get small pieces of debris stuck in just the right places of these injectors, it causes them to not function properly. Often what we'll see is debris stuck in a tiny little orifice in the valve piece. That causes the injector to overfuel. Sometimes they'll refer to it as hung open. A lot of times it's not necessarily hung open, but it's very slow to close. So it's overfueling, which um, if the truck's knocking, hammer in at idle, or um, if it happens at high load, it can be worse, catastrophic engine damage potentially. But if you've just recently had the system apart, if you put a new set of injectors in, or if you had anything apart, even changed fuel filters, and the truck starts knocking and hammering, white smoking like crazy, it's probably got a piece of debris stuck in the Z orifice right here, uh, which is causing it to be slow to close. So just shut it off, pull the injectors, and uh, usually we can repair that. The reason that is, this sits up inside of the injector like that. So this goes for solenoid style injectors, which is on the truck side, LB7, LOI, LBZ, LMM on Duramax, and uh, 5, 9, 6, 7 Cummins, pretty well all the Cummins, um, have a similar design and function to this. Parts that are very hard to even see with the naked eye. So this is 
the valve piece, this is the control rod. So this is up underneath of here. This control rod sits in here. And this, there's some other parts missing here in the middle. But functionally, that's what's happening, is that holds the needle inside the nozzle, which holds it closed. So what happens when this normally is partially extended and holding that needle shut, that's when the injector is not being commanded to fire. When it's being commanded to fire, you energize the solenoid, it pulls on a little armature plate, and it lifts, this is tweezer type operation here, a ball like that. That size ball, which you can't hardly see, sits on a little seat right there. So what happens is you lift that little ball inside of here is pressurized. So it's trying to push this control rod out, which is putting pressure on the needle holding it shut. When you lift the ball, it vents the backside of this and allows fuel to flow out of this little chamber and lets that lift. So every time that you're, the millions and millions of times the injectors are firing, every single time, it's because this little control rod's moving in and out, opening and closing that needle down in the nozzle. And that's because of that tiny little ball and this little ball holder sits up on the ball seat, believe it or not. And that's what allows the fuel to flow out the backside, which relieves pressure in this control chamber, which allows that to lift. And then when you go to de-energize the injector, it seals that again, and there's a tiny little orifice that is constantly filling that chamber. And that builds pressure inside of there and pushes that back out again. So that's happening very fast, very controlled. Uh, it's, it's amazing hydraulics. Uh, it's really, you're not actuating when you, fire the injector, you're not doing it purely with the electromagnet solenoid. You're doing it with that plus hydraulic pressure balance. So <clears throat> what we see often, if the system's been apart, you get some contamination in it, this little orifice, which we'll have to show with a microscope picture, will get debris stuck in it. Sometimes we'll see little pieces of plastic, sometimes we'll little, see little pieces of metal, Teflon tape, things like that The guys had apart. Um, and you'll have a little blockage in that. Well, what happens is that restricts the flow to extend this control rod, which closes the injector. So it goes ahead and fires, but the refill port is restricted. So it takes too long, and that's why you get the overfuel. That's why it's knocking and white smoking and stuff like that. So that is a very common place. If we guys send us injectors, it happens very often. It says, hey, it's overfueling, it's knocking, it's hung open, something like that. We know you got to completely disassemble the injector. Uh, it's fairly involved, but then we get down to this. We go in the microscope, look out under the microscope with tiny little picks and, and uh, tweezers, and we try to free that up and then reassemble and uh, retest and make sure everything's good. So very important to not get debris introduced into it. You can also have needle scuffing where this needle fits down into the nozzle bore and we're talking you know 20 30 thousand or more psi of pressure uh, in these systems and that is down in the bottom of the nozzle but not really above it and so just the tight tight clearance between the needle body and the nozzle bore is what holds that high pressure down here and doesn't allow the leakage up there but what can happen is like this one did actually has needle scuffing so you end up with a DLC coating, which is a very hard, good coating, but depending on certain situations, you can end up with scuffing in that area. You can also end up with scuffing <clears throat> on this control rod inside of here. Either of those cases can cause the injector to uh, be slow and sluggish to react and also causes internal leakage and return flow to go high. So. On the injector front, that's typically what we'll see. Sometimes we'll see gas contamination that actually eats up the solenoids. Um, and usually we'll, when we're electrically testing the solenoids, because we do that when we get injectors back too, we always test them with a high voltage megger, both hot and cold, because sometimes you get different results. Um, and uh, when we test those and see them fail, a lot of times it's the gas is eaten into the insulation and the coil itself. So 
It's things that we're looking for when we're testing injectors, making sure we're providing the best product or helping you troubleshoot problems out in the field. Um, not that, I mean, there's millions and millions of these systems out there. You don't need to be scared of it. They're amazing. They make our vehicles what they are today, but you just got to take care of them, be conscious uh, to not be careless with what you're introducing into the system or getting bad fuel. Cap stuff off, like I said. Pumps also are susceptible to it. CP3s are pretty tough. Our DCRs are pretty tough. They're hard to hurt, but it is possible. If you're gonna hurt a CP3 and you wanna do it right, this would be one way to do it. This one blew its guts out. Blew the cut plugs or the freeze plugs straight out of it. Bottom end, catastrophic failure. This would be another one of those ones that got shipped in like we recommend not and broke the connector off of here and beat the thing all up because it wasn't packaged very well. But what can happen in these cases, uh, sometimes contamination that causes uh, lubricity issues, but in this one in particular and in some others, something not to do for guys that are doing uh, modified trucks, especially in some of the dual pump kits you have some of the kits call for moving the high pressure outlet on this, or um, if guys uh, have things apart, sometimes we'll, I don't know why they'll take these fittings out, just messing around, uh, curious, whatever. It's not just a fitting, unfortunately. So it's not just an outlet fitting like an AN feed port or return port. This actually is, has a spring and a small ceramic ball. That is the outlet valve for the high pressure fuel pump. There's inlet valves and outlet valves, just like an engine. This is a little three cylinder engine basically. And the inlet valve allows fuel into the cylinder. The piston or plunger compresses it, pushes it out the exhaust valve or outlet valve. What we see happen sometimes is if guys have monkeyed with these, sometimes, probably almost always, not intentionally, they'll lose parts. This might be in the truck and they need to swap this fitting over to here to make it fit better for the fuel lines or the kit that they've got. Every plug as well as this fitting are actually the same. They have a little stub with a little spring and behind that spring is a ceramic ball. And that ceramic ball sits in a seat and is what seals the super high rail pressure from the cylinder itself. So if you take that fitting out and relocate it and don't realize it and drop this ball, put it back in, you're never gonna know it until you fail your pump. The other issue we've seen is guys will accidentally stack two of these in there. They were like, oh crap, I just saw that thing, I had them out, it must go in this hole. You double stack two of these against each other. These are ceramic very hard, but about the only way to hurt ceramic is with another ceramic and it'll crush these balls, which then also sends ceramic dust into your injectors and usually wipes them out. So either way, Either send stuff to us to build the way you need it, or if you're needing something repaired, we can do that. Like in the case where, where that fitting went. Say you accidentally damaged this fitting. Uh, you stripped the thread, something like that. You gotta be very careful. Don't just grab it out of a core pump or something like that. It is a high pressure seat. And uh, that is very critical because what happens is if that's uh, missing or damaged, you have super high pressure, the rail pressure is back feeding into the cylinder. So when it goes to bottom dead center functionally, it has more like 30,000 PSI instead of 50 to 100 PSI feeding it. And then it goes to try to compress that. It's just like an engine with way, way, way too much boost pressure um, back feeding back into it. So that is often, if we see a CP3 that's blown up, that's the most likely candidate as to what happened is outlet valve issue uh, that overloaded that cylinder, overloads the polygon on the bottom and uh, just literally blows its guts out. So it gets pretty rough in a hurry. Another area on CP3s that is susceptible, the gear pumps right here on the back. <clears throat> these are a pretty neat little creature also actually. So you open these up, they've got two little gears. That's just a cute little gear pump. Another neat little feat of uh, manufacturing, and that's what is taking your low pressure supply in through here and boosting it into the CP3. So if that gear pump's broke, the CP3, it's, truck's not gonna run. These are very tight clearances in here as well. 
So what can happen is if you get debris into the system and it wedges between these gears or between the gear and the housing, it can try to lock this thing up. It either locks these gears up and breaks the end of the camshaft that drives it, or in this particular case, it actually just broke the post off completely. So there's two little posts that these gears ride on. It actually just tried to side load it hard enough it broke that post off. So what we'll see occasionally is grinding, side loading up here into the housing. So moral of the story is be very clean, very cautious with your system. Like I say, you don't need to be scared of it. Uh, people have these apart every day and no problems whatsoever, but try to save you guys some trouble uh, and some money. Make sure that stuff is taken care of well, clean. Don't use pipe thread, don't use thread tape, Teflon tape. We see that stuck in metering units sometimes and inside of fuel systems. That's why we don't use pipe on any of our stuff um, and don't recommend it for any fuel systems. There's no way you can control how much thread tape you got on that thing and if it's up inside or not. Um, just use good quality parts, good quality fuel, good quality fuel filters from a reputable source. There's way too many knockoffs now. I uh, wasn't planning on getting into this, but we will anyways, I guess, while we're on the topic. I don't trust hardly any filters that don't come straight from a manufacturer or straight from a dealer. Uh, at this point, the counterfeits have gotten uh, out of control where you can order a Motorcraft filter on Amazon or anywhere online, and the clones have cloned the packaging. They've cloned everything to the normal customer end user. You can't tell the difference. They look similar enough. If you don't have another one right beside it, uh, you can't tell the difference. The internals of those filters is anybody's guess how good those are. We have dissected some counterfeit filters that customers have, uh, or that other companies have tried to sell as clones of our Ford disaster prevention kits, and they don't even have seals inside, sealing the dirty from the clean. And the filtration is very poor. Um, there's gonna be issues with them. They could be debris, machining, burrs, and all that kind of stuff in them. So either way, do yourself a favor. Don't try to save 20 bucks, 30 bucks, 50 bucks, whatever it is on filters when it can do thousands of dollars worth of damage. Get good stuff um, from dealers is probably about the safest in some cases or from a good reputable supplier where you know it's a legitimate Donaldson filter. Or it's a legit, um, you know, AC Delco or Motorcraft um, like the OEs intended or like companies that properly engineer them. So anyways, Congrats on having a diesel vehicle, which beats the heck out of the gassers and the rest of them out there, but make sure you take care of them. Thanks.